Good morning, guys. Coming right from the bed this morning as I'm in my quiet time with the Lord and my prayer time and writing and all the things. I just wanted to share this really quick with you guys. So I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday, this guy, and um, he's so talented, like so smart, like he's a chef and it, the brother can cook, okay? He's really, really good at what he does. But he could be a lot better and in a whole different situation. Like he could be, what's the word I'm looking for? With the gift that God has given him of cooking, right? Um, of feeding people. Y'all better catch that. Anyways, with that gift, he can be way more elevated than where he is now. But there's so much going on in his life and he's just trying to find his footing, right? He's trying to figure these things out. Um, he's trying to put things together. Notice I'm saying what he's trying to do, okay? He's trying to do it. He is a, a Christian man. He's a man of God, you know, just like all of us, he falls short of the glory of God. But He's a man of God. He believes in God. He believes what he can do, but he's not putting this thing in God's hands, right? He's trying to do everything himself, figure it out um, himself. He's trying to fix things himself. He's trying to elevate things himself, okay? So as we were talking yesterday, I said, the things that you're holding, I said, you need to put it in God's hands. I said, because he can change it like this. He can elevate things like this. He can change circumstances like this. I said, but you're holding it. So you need to put it in God's hands and let him handle it. And I was telling him about this story I heard, like this analogy and I think I was watching, I don't know if I was on Facebook, YouTube, I don't know where I was watching it from. It was literally just a random person um, that just popped up on some feed, don't know what I was watching. But the guy was saying, a friend of his taught him this, and I'm not gonna quote it verbatim because I don't remember it verbatim, but I remember it enough to know the, the impact it has on people if they come to this understanding. And as I'm in my quiet time with the Lord just now, he gave me a word. So I'm going to, let me just start with the analogy I heard. This guy was saying a friend of his told him how big it gets depend, depends on, I can't talk, it's too early, depends on whose hands it's in. How it works out depends on whose hands it's in. And he explained it like this. If I have a ball, like me, Nina, right? A basketball. I can buy a basketball for, what, $10, $13 in Walmart <laughs> with the price prices going up of stuff. Let's say it's $15. That ball in my hand is worth the $15 I paid for it. But if I put that basketball in the hands of Michael Jordan... Or if it was in the hands of Kobe Bryant, rest his soul. Okay? If it's in the hands of LeBron James, that ball is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars. It depends on whose hands it's in. Okay? So when you put something in someone's hands and that person is in a place of authority and position, the value of that thing changes. So what's worth really nothing in my hands, in one of their hands, it's worth millions. If I'm holding a golf club, it's probably worth what, 20, $25, could be a little bit more pricier just depending on how much I wanna spend on it. If I'm holding a golf club, it's worth 20, $25 in my hands. But if I put that golf club in Tiger Woods' hands, it's worth millions. It is worth millions. So I say this to say, and some of y'all already, you're catching it. If God 
is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and he owns everything under the sun. He makes the rich rich and the poor poor, right? That's in scripture. Like if he is the person that owns everything under the sun, nothing could even happen without God allowing it to happen. He may not cause everything, but it has to pass through him first. He can blow on something, blow up, that's it. And it moves. Whatever he needs it to do, it does it. He's God. So if you take whatever it is that's in your hands, financial issues, health issues, marriage issues, relationship issues when it comes to your family, uh, job issues, uh, what at mental issues, okay, uh, eating disorders, whatever, that book idea you have, whatever it is that's in your hands, put it in God's hands because that thing is priceless. You can't even do what he can do in two seconds, okay? What takes him two seconds gonna take you about 20 years to do. Put it in his hands and the value of it changes. Whatever it is for you, put it in his hands and the value of it changes. I hope this word blesses somebody. And I was telling this to my friend last night on the phone and he's like, that's really deep. I say, yeah. I said, everything you're carrying, you're trying to take care of this issue, that issue, and it's, it's stressing you out. But if you put it in God's hands, he'll add value to that thing. You, If you put that little bit in his hands, he'll turn it into an abundance. But you got to put it in his hands. It's not worth nothing when it's in your hands. We only are powerful by the Holy Spirit, by God. Our gifts that he gives us, we only have it and are able to operate in it because of him. I only have breath because of God. I could see because of God. I can move my body because of God. But he can stop all of that in a second. So if this man has all of this power, why are we trying to do things in our own strength? Let tomorrow worry about itself. Stand in today, allow today to play out. Say a prayer and ask God to just bestow blessings upon the week, upon the day. And even if you don't see that situation move today or tomorrow, you're still blessed because you're here. You're still blessed because you're still able to commune with God. You're still blessed. But give God every day, to be honest. Give him all the days. Let tomorrow worry about itself. You can't worry about what's happening tomorrow. Tomorrow may not even come. Do you know how many people go to work and they're stressing about paying bills and about what they're going through in their lives, um, relationships falling apart, people don't want to talk to them, and all of these things. And then that same person may get into a car accident and it takes their life. So what's going on at the time no longer matters. What, what's going to happen tomorrow or next week, it doesn't matter because they're not here anymore. Our time is so valuable. And yes, while this is a temporary place, <laughs> thank God this is a temporary place because <laughs> I'm not made for this, um, this world, okay? Thank God this is temp that this life is temporary and that our eternal life is with God. Thank God for that. With Let me tell you guys something. With my faith being as strong as it is, I'm not perfect, but with my faith and how God has remolded me, death don't scare me. All The only thing I ask a person when they've lost somebody, I'm like, wow, I'm, you know, I'm sorry to hear that. Did they know the Lord? And when they tell me, yes, they knew the Lord, that person was a man or woman of God. I'm like, oh, I'm still going to comfort the person. But in my heart, oh, I'm at peace for them. Congratulations, ma'am or sir. You no longer have to struggle in this, uh, this world. Congratulations. You want to be with your father where you have no issues, no struggles, no complications, no nothing. 
we mourning for them because they passed away. They should be mourning for us because we stuck here. Yes, life is beautiful. Every day is beautiful. But when you grow closer to God, death is not scary for you because you know that's just death in this body, in this world. But we have eternal, everlasting life. We don't die. We're only resting when we die from this physical body. We have eternal life when we choose to partner with God. But I don't want to stray too much from that. God is saying, put it in his hands. Because if you put it in his hands, he can multiply it. If you put it in his hands, he can change it. If you put it in his hands, my face is itching. Holy Spirit, he can do great things with it. Take it out of your hands. It's not worth anything in your hands. You can't do anything in your own strength, with your own plans, with your own mindset. This has to be done supernaturally. The great ideas that people get into their, their souls, their minds, their wills, their emotions, and they're ready to just go at it. Those are ideas from the Lord. Those ideas don't even come from us. When he gives us the idea of opening a coaching business, starting a ministry, doing all of these things, that comes from him. And if it comes from him, you can bet your bottom dollar, he's going to allow that thing to prosper. Now, it looks different for everybody because everybody's walk is different. And sometimes God will allow someone to struggle longer than another person because they need to be molded in that area. Right? They need to be molded in that area. So he'll allow them to go through a struggle longer than somebody else because that other somebody may already be humbled. They may already have a humbled heart. God looks at the heart. So he knows what needs to be pulled from your heart that's not of him. So he allows us to go through things differently. But just because you see somebody that is a woman or man of God and they seem more successful and put together than you doesn't mean God has forgotten about you. Our walks are just different. Enjoy the pace in this time. Enjoy it. If he gave it to you one time, he'll give it to you again. And he'll give it to you even more than he did the previous time. He does not change. In my quiet time, um, I just literally opened my Bible, y'all. That's it. I opened my Bible and it opened up to Matthew uh, 14, verse 13. And I had verse 13 highlighted. I'm going to read verse 13 to 21. When Jesus, I'm reading from the New King James. When Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude. He was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. When we follow Jesus, he, he, he gets moved with compassion for us, okay? When we choose to follow him everywhere, he's moved, okay? Y'all better catch that. And he healed their sick. When it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a deserted place <laughs> and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the village and buy themselves food. Don't you know, God, he, he creates blessings in deserted places. That's a whole nother word. But when Jesus, I'm sorry, but Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. He telling them to do it, right? He put the power in their hands. Like <laughs> he, he gave it to them to do it, right? Y'all do it. Give them some food. The disciples are like, we ain't got no food for all these people. What you talking about? Again, we can't do it in our strength, right? He said, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, we have here only five loaves and two fish. Lord, this all I got in my hands. Five loaves and two fish. What you want me to do with this? He said to them, bring it here to me. Translation, put it in my hands. Put it in my hands. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves. He took it, meaning it was in his hands, right? He took the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to the heavens, looking up to his father, God, okay? Looking up to his father, God, he knew what position his father was in. He blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples and the disciples gave it to the multitudes. 
So they only had the five loaves and two fish. They were holding it, right? They were holding the five loaves and two fish in their hands. And they're like, Lord, we can't be nobody with this. He said, give it to me. So they put it in his hands, right? And when they put it in his hands, it multiplied. And when he gave it back to them, they were able to feed thousands. And it wasn't just 5,000. It was more than 5,000. But when they put it in his hands, he did what he needed to do with it. And he gave it back to them. And they were able to do exactly what he commanded them to do originally. He said, they don't need to go. You feed them. We don't got enough food, Lord. Give it to me. Right? So he had already told them. He gave them a command of something to do. Just like he gives us. Go start the business. Go do this. Go do that. Lord, we ain't got no money to do this. I'm giving you the task. Put it in my hands. And we give it to him. And when he gives it back, that thing is able to prosper. Y'all better catch this word. So they all ate and were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of fragments of the fragments that remained. Now, those who had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. It was more than 5,000. And not only did they eat, they had leftovers, okay? 12 baskets of leftovers. That 12 um, symbolizes prophetically God's divine order. When he puts things in orders, it makes sense. When he put things in it puts things in order. It makes sense. And his math be math in it, okay? So that's all I wanted to release to you guys this morning. Again, I just opened my Bible and I knew when I saw this, I have to send it to my friend too because he needs to read it. But I knew when I saw this, I was like, uh, I hear you, Lord. God is saying, put it in his hands. In our hands, it ain't worth nothing. But in his hands... It's worth more than it would be if we put that basketball in LeBron James's hands or in Kobe's hands, rest his soul, or in Michael Jordan's hands. Jesus bigger than them. They can't even hold a torch to what Jesus can do with that basketball, okay? But the point of it is, is when you put it in someone's hands that already has value, the value of whatever you put in their hands increases. So, yeah. And God has more value than anybody in this world. Than anybody you could ever get a loan from or that could invest in your business. God is the ultimate investor. And he doesn't do it to be boastful like most people they'll invest in you and they want you to like give them props for everything the lord is what you can call a silent investor he doesn't boast when he's investing in you look what i'm doing for you blah 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 no he expects you to do the boasting on his behalf to give him the glory but he does it because he loves you and just like these people he was moved with compassion for them so he began to heal the sick and then he fed them because he was moved with compassion for them not because he wanted to be known for increasing the fish and the bread he was moved with compassion for them he moved in love he loved them he, he, he cared about them, so he wanted to do something great for them. So, yeah. I love you guys. I hope this blesses you. Um, and I hope y'all have a great Monday. Love you. Bye.